All right, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace or upgrade or update your RAM memory for your Intel NUC. And I will also be showing you how to install a hard drive or an SSD of the 2.5 inch variety into your Intel NUC as well. And in this particular instance, I'm using this NUC here. And this one is the NUC C6AYS. But whatever I do here is going to be applicable for a large number of NUCs. They're all basically the same inside, that is. And basically, this one doesn't have an M.2, so I won't be doing an M.2 drive on this one. Although, I will be getting one with M.2 shortly, and I'll also show a quick one on how to you know, do that one as well. So basically, I'll just kind of give a little bit of a view of the NUC from the outside. Now, these are all basically the same thing. Um, they're basically a standardized little tiny PC that Intel make. So you're going to find that regardless of like, you know, which one you get, they're all very similar. Now, I'm not going to go into any great detail about the similarities or not with these things because this video is more just to do the RAM and the hard drive system. Okay, so let me just get all this stuff away off the table and then I'll crack into it. So the first thing that we need to do here is to take the base plate off, which is how we get access to the inside of the nook. Now the base plate is only held on by four screws, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So we'll unscrew them shortly, but I'll just make a point here as well. This process here is actually very straightforward. So don't be scared of doing this stuff because this is exactly what these are designed for. The vast majority of nooks actually don't come with any RAM whatsoever or any storage. So you would have to do this in order to you know make the nook work anyway whereas this one as a for instance actually does come with two gig of ram and a 32 gig emmc which is like basically soldered onto the board now with something like this the chances are you know at some point you may want to start expanding it so exactly the same thing for this one okay so i'm going to go ahead and just unscrew all these screws as you can see here i'll try not get me hand too much in the way so let me just oh and i'll try not to knock the camera as well right so let me just undo these like i said the process really is very straightforward it's not difficult at all and like i said it is designed or these are designed to be opened and to be fiddled with and stuff that was the whole point of these nooks okay Another thing as well, as you'll probably notice, is I don't use any kind of earth strap or anything like that. I've never found it to be necessary. But, you know, if you want to be ultra, ultra safe, then yes, use yourself an earth strap. Okay. The other thing as well, all the way through this video, if at any point you, you know, you're going to be doing this, check me in uh, my descriptions below. There'll be links to a bunch of these things and also earth straps and stuff like that. Okay. So now that I've undone the screws, it's just a simple case of tipping the nook upside down. Put your hand underneath and you'll just catch the base plate coming off so let me just do that there we go so as the base plate kind of half comes off just keep all of the base plate and then tip the nook back the other way around and now you can lift the base plate straight off okay now what we're presented with here is the drive mechanism for this particular nook so this is where our sata drive goes in and in this instance i'm using an ssd this will take any two and a half inch drive anyway. That's a SATA variety. Now, what I'm going to do here is just lift this out to one side and let's have a look further inside as to what's going to happen here. Because what it is, I will do the drive secondly. I will do the RAM first and then the drive. So let's just pop this out. Now, what I would do here is I would literally just move it to one side as best as possible like that. And the reason for that is, in fact, let me just refocus the camera and I'll show you. So the reason why I'm just basically putting the drive bay to one side is because if you don't do that, you're going to have to take off two cables. There's this one here, which is the SATA cable. And then also there's the power cable, which is just next to it underneath here. Now, it's not entirely necessary to have to do that. The reason why I would suggest don't do it if you don't have to is only because the power cable itself is quite fiddly and you know you may possibly damage it if you're not careful with it so like i say in this particular instance i'm not going to replace or take out the power cable or the sata cable it's just that there is enough space for me to do this without having to do that and not run the risk of damaging the cables okay so that's the reason why i'm not taking them off 
So what I'm going to do now is just get on with inserting the new RAM. Now in this instance, I've already got RAM in here, so I'll show how to take this out and then put the new RAM in. But like I say, if this is a fresh nook that doesn't have anything in, you'll be just presented with blank slots, which I'll show in a minute. Now what it is, on this particular one, there's two slots for the RAM. Now if you've only got one with one slot, that's fine, you just use the one slot. However, this one's got two and a load of them have got two on, but it's the exact same process for both slots. Now, as you can see here, there's a little silver thing just there and then the same one on this side. Now, what that is, they are basically little catches to hold the RAM into place. So what I'm going to do is just pry them, pry them apart. Well, you might not be able to see this very clearly, but just literally pry them apart to open them apart away from one another and then the RAM will just pop up like that. And then all you do, just slide the RAM out backwards and then it comes out, there we go, so the RAM's out. So now what we've got is just the bare slots for the RAM. So there's one slot, there's the other slot. Also, what's worth mentioning here as well, if you've got two slots like this, generally, if you're only putting one RAM stick in, just use the bottom slot, not the top slot. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got two four gig RAM sticks. So what I'm going to do is do the reverse now to put these in. So here's the first stick going into the bottom slot. Right, so what you do, line it up with this here. So this is where the RAM stick goes in, exactly where we've just taken it out. So line it up with that. Now push it in a bit, you'll feel it click a little bit. And then once it's in, push it down. And then what's going to happen, those two little silver clamp things on the side will actually click into place and hold the stick in place as well. So just push it down and then as we could hear there, there was a definite click. So that's like, that's solid, that's in now. So that, that's job done for the first one. Like I say, if this were one of the systems with only one slot on, that's job done then. You can just get off from this part and carry on. But I'm gonna use two. So here's the second one going in and it's exactly the same as the first. Just line it up with the top slot again. Just push it down a bit until you hear it click. There we go. And then it's again, clicked in, grabbed, whatever. And then that's job done. Both of them are in. So there we go. I mean, I'm, I'd probably make a meal out of this because I'm talking my way through it. But literally, that's a 10 second job. So honestly, it's really, really dead straightforward and dead easy to do. So I'm going to do now is just get on with the drive section. Actually, just before I show the drive going in, if all you were doing was to upgrade the RAM at this point, literally just put the drive bay back in as so, and then just put your base plate back on and screw it all back together and then jobs are good. And obviously in this instance though, I'm gonna be showing how to insert the drive into the little bay there. Now don't forget, this will take an SSD or a spinning disc mechanical drive. As long as it's a two and a half inch SATA, you're good to go with it. So once again, I'm not gonna disconnect the cables because I just don't feel you have to at this point. Um, and also it stops like, you know, stops you from having to worry about whether or not you're gonna damage cables as well. So once again, just lift it out. It'll come out very easily like that one just has. Now, if I can just get a position on this where we can maybe see the back. So at the back down here, we've got a SATA and power socket on the back. And literally all that, all that happens here is you've got a hole at the front here. And let me just move that up a bit further. So when you get your drive, you literally just slide it in there and then click it into the back there. Now the other thing to notice as well before you do this is which way round the socket is at the back. In this instance, I've got to put the drive in upside down. Although when it when, when the actual nook is complete and turned the other way around, the drive's obviously the right way up. I don't know if that's gonna make a difference to mechanical drives. Maybe that's why it's like that, I don't know. Mostly it doesn't matter for SATA drives. But anyway, what you do, you literally just get your drive, make sure you've orientated the sockets there. So that orientates to that. And then just slide it in from the front. You might have to force it in a little bit. It's only because this mechanism has actually got little clips on the side springs which hold the drive into place. And I'll get to that in a second. So slide it down. And then what, what you'll find is the SATA and the power will line up at the back. So just give that a little push in. Hold on. And then there you go. So that's now properly connected. Now at this point, because these have got like, or the bay itself has got these little clip things on the side here, which will hold the drive into place. 
you could just leave it at that but for good measure i'm just going to screw the drive in so let me just place the drive back in the the body like that then what it is usually either with the drive or with the nook itself you'll get a bunch of screws so there's four screws here and like i say there's one two three four holes there to hold the drive in the bay so i'm just going to quickly whiz them in as well okay so there we have it there's the screws gone in to hold the drive into the drive bay and basically that's all done now so all we really have to do here is do the reverse of what we did at the start and put the base back on. Now what you're going to notice as well on various different nooks there might be little different cutouts on the sides here. And what it is, it just makes the, the cutout line up with the base. So you can only put the base in one way so there's no way of getting that wrong. So what I'm going to do is line mine back up so that all the little notches fit together so as you can see there's notches there there's two there and there's a couple there so that just means the base will only go on one way and then just tighten it back up again okay i'll do this bit in real time just so you can see how long it takes the only thing is i think a bit of, i think i made a bit of a meal <laughs> about putting them little fiddly screws into the uh, the ssd just then um don't know, I think uh, I'm getting old, I can't see things properly. <laughs> so I have a problem with little tiny screws. Okay, so let me just whiz that on. And then there goes the last one. I mean, the thing is, you know, th th this is me doing a walkthrough trying to explain things. And honestly, this can all be done in about two minutes. You know, I'm just making a meal of it here. So that's all on now. So let me just kind of get the camera in a different position. Let's have a final look at it. Okay, so there we have it then. There's our nook with all of its guts put into place. So that's going to be good to go now. So all you've got to do is like plug it in and go for it. Also, if you're doing a migration from a different system and whatnot, as long as it's compatible, if you check here now, there'll be a link somewhere up here to one of my tutorials on how to use Macrium Reflect, which will allow you to disk image one drive and put it into another and stuff like that, which may you know, maybe of some use to people doing this stuff because they may be migrating windows from one drive to another, as long as obviously the whole thing's compatible and all that stuff. Yeah, so there we go then. That is exactly how you do this. Now, I know I've made a bit of a meal over this, you know, like it's, you know, took ages to do, but that's only because I'm showing you how to do it. Literally, you could do this in less than two minutes. And like I said from the outset, it's really a very straightforward process. So don't be frightened about having to do these things because this particular type of computer is actually designed to be done this way so yeah just get on and have a crack with it and the, honestly these are brilliant little machines well in fact anyone who's bought one probably already knows that but i'll be covering some more stuff on nooks in the future because these are amazing for certain stuff okay so i think that's about it like i said from the outset as well if you've got an interest in such things check the descriptions below there'll be links to various nooks memory ssds and stuff like that and maybe some links if i can think of them to other videos have done which might be of some use anyway i'm going to start talking like a mad person again here so i'm going to get off so i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now